All right, let's get into some Synchro Festival 2023 replays. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the Sword Soul deck. I did post a deck list for this. I will link it in the description, and it'll probably be the uh, link in the info card on the top right of the screen. To start things off, this was the first match I played in the event. Uh, we won the coin toss. We're going first. And our opening hand wasn't the greatest, but because we did have the emergence, we are able to start things off by getting the Mo Ye. Um, no interruptions on the opponent's side, which is surprising. Leads me to believe they're prob probably losing using a loner deck. Um, and this is one of the things that I talked about in the video that I made, I guess now a couple weeks ago when I did the free-to-play Godi deck. And I said, while Godi is, you know, one of the loner decks for this event, one of the reasons you don't want to play it is because those loner decks, they, they don't really outfit their, their, um, their deck list with the necessary hand traps that you need to play in the format, like Maxi and things like that. And as a result, they do suffer. So this is exactly what I'm talking about here. I mean, you play a lot of engine, so, you know, you're going to be able to play but you're not going to be able to stop your opponent from setting up their board. So you can see here, we are able to set up full uh, Sword Soul board here, whereas if the opponent had like one Ash Blossom, one Imperm, you saw that we basically had no extension play because if that emergence didn't, didn't resolve or this Moye was negated, um, we wouldn't be able to extend into our uh, Chi Sao and Baron. <clears throat> I have no experience against this Ice Jade deck, so this is the first time I'm playing against it. I probably make a couple of misplays, not really knowing exactly what everything does. Um, but I'm not too worried um, because they are not able to get rid of the Baron, and Baron can just slowly destroy their field. Um, I'm opting to still not tag out of the Baron, so I know I'm going to trigger these effects because I was reading these cards a little bit. going to trigger the Maxi for like a one, a draw one, um, and we do draw into an Ash Blossom. We're going to trigger the uh, Called by the Grave to negate whatever was going to activate in the graveyard, I think, to equip to this monster. And uh, I don't end up attacking, I guess. Uh, why not? Was Oh, because I was lowered on attack probably, right? I didn't catch that. I was looking at the graveyard. Uh, but yeah, anyways, the opponent, again, has no extension plays. I think we were able to negate whatever they were going to do there with an Ash Blossom. So this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, look at this. We put the opponent on no resources at this point. Um, I mean, I think they might have some stuff activatable in the graveyard or something, but yeah, you can see here that they, they've pretty much resigned to just like doing nothing essentially. Um, but this is one of the issues too with the deck. Um, you know, you need engine in order to play and when you're playing a lot of hand traps, you are going to draw a lot of your non-engine or, or suboptimal cards sometimes. And while we could have used the Heavenly Circle to normal summon Adhara and then Heavenly Circle it, whatever we would search for would not be summonable anyway so we'd have to wait so might as well just uh, i should have set the adhara actually and then passed but regardless uh i think i'll just do this for challenges at the end here not bming or anything just get some extra special summons in get some extra synchros in go through those uh challenges faster and yeah just kind of win the game at this point but uh, that's going to do it for game one and this is the showcase of why you should build your own deck and not rely on the loner decks I'm pretty sure this guy was using a loner deck. Um, I don't know if the Ice Jade is, is, is deck is even a loner. I'm going to check after this, but no hand traps, no interruptions. I'm guessing it's a loner. So yeah, I just went in and I checked, and uh, the Ice Jade deck is one of the loner decks that are available. So anyways, moving on to this next match here, we once again win the coin toss going first, which is fantastic. Again, our opening hand isn't the greatest, but this is an instance where we can use Circle we're going to see if it gets negated. No. So is this opponent also on? Nope, they're not on a loner because they have less than 15 cards in their extra deck. And look at this. Sure enough, they do have hand traps to shut down the Mo Ye. Thankfully, we do have cross out designate to counter the Imperm. Basically, the only thing that you'll, you're going to play that's going to counter Imperm. And it's a one of and we drew it. So a little bit lucky on our end there. But now we are going to be able to set up full combo going into Chi Sao and Mo Ye to draw and Chi Sao to search. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and activate the Long Young and opt to go into a Baron. You know, Lava Golem and Kaijus are legal for this event, so you have to be a little bit careful with Sword Soul. I don't, like, I think this is a good deck. I, I don't think it's the best deck. Um, it is a very powerful deck, but you got to remember that you don't have access to, like, a lot of your Tenyi ten effects as easily as you would with, you know, Sword Soul in the regular meta because you, you can't play the Link monsters like Monk. Um, so it's a little bit harder to trigger their effects. You need like the token on field. Um, and yeah, because of that, you, you you lose a lot of utility. Anyways, at this point, um, you know, we're, your opponent's trying to pop off with their punk engine and we are going to stop them. Again, I'm not worried about any of this because I can go full extension next turn anyways with the Taya. Uh, 
So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Normal summon, banish the Shatana. Um, I've since changed this deck list. I don't know what it is. I've I've drawn into or seen both of my Shatanas like way more than I should. I only play two and I cut it down to one because I'm like, I don't know why I'm seeing this card so much. Anyways, uh, we're gonna continue to extend here. The opponent kind of realizes there's nothing they can do because we can go into like Baxia, we can go into a number of things to like clear the opponent's board and then we just obviously have way more uh, like card advantage than the opponent. So they end up scooping that matchup. And once again, that's the power of Sword Soul, especially when you go first. All right, in this next matchup here, once again, a pretty decent opening hand, and we are going first. I think I lost this coin toss, though, and my opponent opted for me to go first, so let's see what goes on here. We're going to actually start off with the uh, Long Young, which is pretty good, and I opt to play it a little risky and go into the Sinister Sovereign. One of the things I haven't talked about is the presence of Nibiru. I haven't encountered it yet, but it is definitely something you have to respect. Uh, and Sword Soul has to respect Nibiru because it does beat uh, our boards because we special summon a lot uh, with the uh, Synchros and the uh, tokens. So keep that in mind. This setup though, you, we're going to be able to draw two. One off of the Sinister Sovereign, one off the Moye being used as Synchro Material. And then we search with the Grand Master. So we get a lot of card advantage there. We got Talents for follow up for next turn. We've got two Interruptions. Uh, the Blackout can destroy the Shatana, so we don't even have to sacrifice our Synchros. We got Monster Negate here. We've got Spell and Trap Banish and Special Summon Special Summon Monster Banish as well. And then an Ash Blossom Interruption. So this board is pretty good. You're going to need like a Lava Golem or something to break it. The opponent is going to attempt to play through it though. They are also on Ice Jade. I don't... Maybe this guy was also on the Loner deck. I don't know. Um, but I can understand why you want to use Loner decks, honestly. Because to invest in, in a deck for the Synchro event is kind of expensive. So... It's kind of it's kind of nuts, um, but hey, I guess that's uh, you know that's how it goes sometimes. So it's it just it's just unfortunate, you know, because you can see that how much of a disadvantage you're at when you use a loner deck. Like you have no hand traps. Anyways, uh, this opponent is going to trigger off some effects, but again, we've got the Sinister Sovereign, which is going to mop up a lot of the uh, banishing effects. We're gonna go ahead and use Circle because we can just go full extension here off Taya and we triggered an opponent's monster effect. So we're also going to use Talents to take and Synchro off into Yazi and just go for game here, activating spells again, just for challenges. And that's a GG. All right, in this next matchup here, I believe we're going up against Godi and we are going second. So let's see how this goes. We've got once again, double Shatana. Uh, I don't know what it is about drawing this card a lot, but the opponent seems to have bricked. Uh, they are setting three and passing, so you know for sure they have some kind of interruption. We are going to go ahead and attempt to Moye, expecting to get negated. Sure enough, they do indeed have the Imperm, but that's totally fine because I've got Blackout and I do plan to Blackout the last two cards there. Um, so we just pass, knowing that we have Ash Blossom, hopefully to interrupt what the opponent is doing. I mean, at this point, we don't know that they're on the Godi deck. Um, but after I destroy those two cards to chain to the Raigeki, I see that they are on the Godi chain, which means that they are on Godi. They set a card and pass. Unfortunately, we can't do anything either. Um, they're going to go ahead and continue on now to play. They get the Assault Synchron and attack. I don't know if this is a loner deck. Um, it might be. I don't know if they play the Assault Synchron in the loner, but I'm, I'm guessing they do because it's a new card, right? So they want to convince you that this is a good card and then buy the new pack in the shop. So... The opponent is going to Tribute Summon for Super Ancient Deep Sea and try to go like, you know, broken effect where they summon all those fish monsters. It's, it's definitely worth it. Um, but thankfully, we're able to shut it down with the Imperm. We could have shut it down with Ash, but at this point, I'm thinking I'd rather save the Ash because I want a Synchro 7 with the uh, Shatana here. And then um, I can use that to bring out Yazi, Yazi Pop, bring out Moye. But I draw into Heavenly Dragon Circle, so it doesn't matter. The opponent is going to get back the Fairy Goatee here, Shift, and they're going to be able to make a Synchro 9. I don't think there's any relevant Synchro 9s that really interrupt me, so I'm totally fine with this. And sure enough, they bring out the Croc. So I'm just going to Ash because I don't even want to risk them drawing into, like, I don't know, an Ash Blossom or uh, an Imperm or something, even though we destroyed two already or went through two. Um, that would be really bad. So you're going to see me use the Blackout here or banish the Blackout from the Taya. Um, sorry, Yazi special summons from deck, not from grave. I said I think I said I'd, I'd bring back the Moye from grave, but from Yazi we have to special summon the Taya, and it's totally fine because we're again we're still able to go full extension. The opponent kind of realizes there's nothing that they can do, and we easily mop up that game. If this was a loner deck, Godi loner deck, you can again see why you don't want to play the loners if you can avoid it. So in the synchro event, I played I think uh, 
eight or nine duels, I've lost one. Uh, this deck is definitely putting in the work. The one duel I lost, I just like bricked. Uh, drew like nothing but like hand traps that ended up not being relevant. So unfortunately, uh, yeah, we lost that one. Um, however, now moving on to this next matchup here, the opponent imperms the Mo Ye, which shuts off, which shuts down our whole turn. And this is not good because um, you know we might not have any major extension next turn. Depending, well, I guess we have like special summon and then summon Ash Blossom if, if we absolutely have to. Um, and yeah, it looks like we're gonna have to do it. We are a little worried about these face down cards. Um, but we are able to get our Synchro off into Baron. Baron is then going to start popping cards and clear the board. Once again, you know, Baron just putting in so much work, uh, gets you so much card advantage. Plus it's like that safety feature because it's an Omni Negate. So good. <clears throat> the opponent has no real extension. They're gonna go ahead and banish our uh, Vishuda to make sure that we don't use it uh, to spin back a card. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and use Baron Effect to bring out Moye because now we can extend with Moye. We'll go into Chi Sao and cycle through our um, cards once again. They're going to Ash Blossom the Mo Ye, which is fine. We still got the search from the Chi Sao. And then we're going to be able to go for game here off of the second Long Young, going back into Baron for the Omni Negate. Not that we really used it last turn, anyways, uh, or last time it was on the field. But the opponent, I don't know why you would surrender before the final attack. Like, just get the match to count towards your, your event total. But, anyways, we take that one pretty easily against a, a Punk deck.